What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Guys, it's Friday. Okay, we finally made it, thank God. Now, I'm joined here by two of probably the most impressive sports watches you can get. The Rolex Submariner, this one's reference number 16800, and the Seiko SBBN 031 Tuna. Both very, very cool watches, and we're gonna kind of pit these two together today. It's gonna be a very fun episode, but really quick, just some background as to why I'm doing this. Well, there's a very, very successful YouTuber. He goes by the name Wrangler Star, and he has like just under a million subscribers. It's not a watch channel. He's more of like an outdoorsy, craftsman, he does a lot of woodworking and tool reviews. Uh, very cool guy, very knowledgeable, and he puts out amazing content. Now, I think he's also like one of the wildland firefighters, like one of the dudes that goes into the forest to fight forest fires, just incredibly badass, but everything he has, he looks at from a functional standpoint, right? Everything has to be durable, and simply put, everything just has to work. Now, he just released a video recently about a new watch that he got, and uh, the watch is a Seiko Tuna. A lot of you guys were linking me to his video knowing that I'd be interested to hear what he has to say about the watch. Now, I'll leave a link to his video below so you guys can check it out, but he seems to really enjoy the watch so far and he's excited about it. Uh, but I was looking at some of the comments and some people were like, oh, uh, well, you should have just gotten a Rolex Submariner or, oh, that thing's nice, but it's just a knockoff Rolex Submariner. Now. As I said, his channel is not a watch channel, so it's safe to assume that the majority of his viewers aren't necessarily watch enthusiasts, but to me, you know, the Rolex Submariner and the Seiko Tuna, they might have some similarities, but they're very, very, like, immensely different. But maybe to the general public, uh, any like stainless steel dive watch with a rotating bezel is just a knockoff Submariner. I don't know, it got me thinking, and you know, I'm fortunate enough to have both of these watches, so why not make a video about it? So let's go ahead, take a look at these two watches and do some comparing and some contrasting. How does that sound? It's 4.50 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, guys, here we go. Two awesome stainless steel dive watches with 300 meter water resistance ratings and legit histories behind them. First up, it needs zero introduction, the Rolex Submariner 16800. And here we have the Seiko SBBN 031 Tuna. Very, very cool watches. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So I think we should start off by talking about history, right? Because both of these watches have very, very impressive histories, especially the Rolex Submariner. So the first Submariner came out in 1953, within a year of the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. And guys, it's really important because the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms and the Rolex Submariner pretty much paved the way for every dive watch ever that's been invented since then. Because when you think about it, before 1952, 1953, the whole dedicated dive watch aesthetic just it, it wasn't a thing, right? The, the whole rotating bezel, enhanced water resistance rating, it did not exist. And that's why there are so many homages of the Rolex Submariner. Uh, however, I do not think the Seiko Tuna is one of those homages and hopefully after this video, you guys will kind of understand my reasoning a little bit better. Now, the Seiko Tuna has some very cool history behind it as well. In 1975, the first Tuna was invented, and it actually had an automatic movement in it. It was invented for Japanese saturation divers. These are guys that spend long periods of time underwater in some pretty harsh conditions. But what ended up happening is that the divers were complaining to Seiko that the mechanical movement was simply too fragile for what they were doing and they needed something a bit more robust. So in 1978, Seiko replaced the mechanical movement with a quartz movement and people were much more happy with it. And this is the most modern take on the Tuna quartz movement. This has the 7C46 high torque quartz movement, a very, very impressive movement, and we'll get into that in a moment. All right, so now let's talk about some of the specifications of these watches, and I'll give you my opinions on functionality and wearability. Now guys, specifications, those are facts, right? The Rolex Submariner here is 40 millimeters. That's not my opinion, that's a fact. But as far as my thoughts on functionality and when I would wear them and, and how they fit in certain situations, that, that's my opinion, okay? So it may differ greatly from yours, and I urge you, leave a comment in the comment section, let's talk about it, because we might agree, we may disagree on certain things. All right, so the Rolex Submariner 16800 is a 40 millimeter watch, and this behemoth over here 
is 48 millimeters. Uh, the added size is due to the shroud it wears. It's got its own body armor. And uh, actually, the Seiko Tuna is about two millimeters thicker than the Rolex Submariner. Now these may not look all that different on camera, but I'm telling you when you wear these watches, they feel much, much different. The Rolex Submariner is much more subdued, much sleeker, much smaller, and the Seiko Tuna obviously feels much bigger. Still a very, very comfortable watch, like surprisingly comfortable. It doesn't weigh you down, but uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's much bigger of a watch. So if I wanted something a lot more low key, just throw it on, don't have to think about it, I would go for the Rolex Submariner. If I wanted to stand out a bit more, if I want something a bit more robust feeling, uh, then yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with the Seiko Tuna. Now this Rolex Submariner has the Cal 3035 automatic movement. It's very smooth, very reliable, fairly accurate movement from Rolex, but it's not all that unique. But the Seiko Tuna has a very, very unique movement in it. The 7C46 high torque quartz movement is only found in this Tuna. It's a metal, jeweled, fully serviceable quartz movement, which is actually very impressive from a technological standpoint. Uh, and it's very cool to have one in this watch. Okay, so they both have 300 meter water resistance ratings, threaded crowns. They're both tough, well-made dive watches through and through. But what do these specifications mean to me? Well. Uh, I can tell you, hands down, Rolex Submariner is about a thousand times more versatile of a piece, right? Very easily dressed up, very refined, sophisticated, wear it with a suit, wear it with jeans and a t-shirt, wear it with shorts, it's not going to look out of place. Uh, the Seiko Tuna is not that way. Uh, it, it's not as easily dressed up. I think it would kind of look out of place with a suit, does not fit under the cuff as easily, um, yeah. Rolex Submariner wins for versatility, for sure. But on the flip side of that, the Seiko Tuna is a much more robust tool watch, in my opinion. I mean, just, just judging by the movement. You bang around the Rolex hard enough, you may be looking at an early servicing with a recalibration. You bang around the Seiko Tuna and, I mean, <laughs> nothing's gonna happen, probably. I mean, that 7C46 movement just doesn't have as many moving parts in it. It's just much more robust, easily sealed movement with not a lot to go wrong. And this Rolex Submariner just has a lot more moving parts. And for that reason alone, I think that the Tuna is a much more robust tool watch. Not to mention it has its own freaking body armor. I mean, look at this thing, it's a tank. So the Rolex Submariner, more sophisticated, much more versatile, but the Seiko Tuna, is just a better dedicated tool watch. Okay, so I know I'm gonna get asked, which watch do I think looks cooler overall? And that's incredibly difficult for me to answer. I absolutely love both of these watches, but what I will say is it's very, very difficult to find something as cool as a vintage Rolex Submariner. I mean, vintage subs are kind of just it for me. The kind of custard loom and the patinaed pip up here, and then when this bezel starts to fade even more, it's gonna look even cooler, but the Seiko Tuna looks cool in its own right. I mean, it's much more modern, much more industrial, how you can see the bolts coming through the shroud. I love the glossy bezel, and I love that double domed crystal, how it distorts some of the dial there. But then, when you're talking about the crystal, I love the vintage thing going on here with that Cyclops and how it's kind of raised above the bezel a little bit. And this is a much more classic design with the three o'clock crown. And I love Seiko's very traditional Seiko four o'clock crown. Just, uh, if you couldn't tell, this is incredibly difficult for me. Because these are, these are probably two of my favorite companies held here in my hands right now, Rolex and Seiko. So yeah, I, I think they both look incredibly cool. But what I will say is, Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you feel, uh, the Rolex Submariner's design is, is kind of invisible nowadays, right? You wear this in a room of people and uh, it kind of just blends in. You wear this and it's much more out there, much more in your face. And to the layman, I think the Seiko Tuna is just that much more different, or it's different enough to stand out and maybe be a talking point. Now, in a room of watch enthusiasts, a vintage Submariner, people will talk your ear off about it for hours. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love both of these. And you know, it's cool, depending on how you feel, maybe you wanna be a little bit low key, throw on this Submariner. Maybe you, maybe you wanna be a bit more in your face. You wanna be a bit more out there. 
hey, throw on the Seiko Tuna. It's just, I don't know, these things have different strengths and I'm trying my hardest to portray that in this video right now. Tell me how I'm doing guys, leave me a comment. All right guys, and for my final point in this video, I wanna talk about value because I know that's everybody's main argument. It always comes down to money. Now guys, you're gonna be spending more money up front, obviously, for a Rolex Submariner. And uh, now, the, to get this reference number, the 16800, you're looking anywhere from around 7,000 to 8,000, even higher. And uh, there is a Rolex bubble going on, and that's a topic for a different video. Very interesting, but I feel confident saying you're not gonna lose money on a Rolex Submariner. Now, the Seiko Tuna is about a $1,200, $1,300 watch. Um, kind of difficult to compare. I don't think you're gonna lose too much money if you choose to buy one and then sell one. But yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of apples and oranges. Rolex is an absolute powerhouse when it comes to value retention. Now, why is that? Is it because you're just paying for a brand name? Is it because, oh, it's just their, their marketing team, dude? No, it's, it's not just a name, it's not just marketing. You are paying for the marketing, you are paying for the name, but it didn't happen overnight, guys. It's because Rolex consistently, over a long period of time, put out really reliable, really high quality pieces, and that's why they can consistently fetch very, very high prices, even on the secondhand market. Now, Seiko, I mean, they have a very long history of putting out very consistently good timepieces, but Seiko also has a very large spectrum of watches that they offer. They have everywhere from the entry level Seiko 5 up to the very broad spectrum of Seikos, all the way to Grand Seiko and then Creator watches, which are, you know, some of them are in the six figures. So it's kind of difficult to compare when it comes to value retention. But uh, I will say Rolex is an absolute powerhouse. You're not gonna lose money on a Submariner. But with that being said, we do need to factor in how much money you're gonna be spending over a long period of time when you get something like a Rolex Submariner, right? Because we need to factor in servicing fees, all right? Now, I don't think this is a bad thing. I don't think it's bad that you need to pay to get things serviced. Now, you can argue you know, that they, they charge too much for what they offer when it comes to servicing, but it's, it's a necessary evil. And let's be honest, guys, like watch collecting is not an inexpensive hobby. You have to pay to play. It doesn't matter if you only buy Orient Bambinos and Vostok Amphibias. That's still not an inexpensive hobby. You're still paying money. So, I mean, even with the dudes that only buy APs and FP Jorns, uh, yeah, that's even less of an expensive hobby. But yes, you're gonna be spending a lot more money in the long run with the Rolex Submariner, especially when you consider Seiko Tuna, you can get it serviced, it's fully serviceable, but I doubt you're gonna to need to get it serviced as often as with the Rolex Submariner. So um, that's something you definitely need to take into consideration. So guys, does the Seiko Tuna have the cachet and provenance and sophistication that the Rolex carries around with it? No, it doesn't. But maybe that's not impressive to you or important to you. And guess what guys, the Seiko Tuna, I'm, I'm just as proud wearing this watch as I am wearing that watch. I love my Seiko Tuna. I think it's an amazing watch. I think it's totally badass and I think it really shines especially well in certain areas like my dedicated sports watch, dedicated tool watch. This is a badass piece. And guess what? I also don't think that the Rolex Submariner is just marketing. I don't think it's just a name. I think this is a really badass watch that stands on its own as well. So guys, this it wasn't really a competition. This was more just to share the differences and maybe some similarities between these two watches. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a whole lot of fun making it, but leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you choose either of these watches, or maybe you choose both of them like myself, um, all the power to you. I think you have good taste with either of these, but let me know what you think. All right, guys, and there you have it. Two awesome watches that are very important, orologically speaking, and very important to me, right? These were both grails of mine, so I'm happy to have them, and I'm happy to share them with you. And uh, yeah, if I didn't love them, I wouldn't have them in my collection. But what do you think? What are some strengths, and what are some weaknesses that you see? Which ones would you rather have, and why? Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Let's start a conversation. Let's talk about it. And I wanna thank each and every one of you, because we're just under 19,000 subscribers or seriously, probably by tonight or tomorrow morning, we'll hit that 19,000 mark. And uh, yeah, 20,000, here we come. Thank you so much, guys. Seriously, it means the world to me. And uh, if you're new here, if this is your first video, you're just stopping by the Time Teller channel, I wanna say welcome. And I wanna urge you to consider clicking that subscribe button. It takes one second and it helps me out a ton. And while you're at it, you can click that little bell icon so you do not miss an episode of the Time Teller. There's just so much more awesome content 
on the way and you don't want to miss it i'm telling you guys please like comment and subscribe share this with other watch enthusiasts other people that you think would enjoy this i'm jory goodman the time teller and always remember i didn't invent time i just tell it